Okay. So as we look at the concept of iridology equipment, what we need to be aware of is that there's, there are a lot of things to consider. You need to know who your ideal client is, who the vast majority of your clientele is, but you also now need to know how to instruct them on how to get good iris photos themselves because most iridologists that I know of right now that are practicing still are in lockdown, right? Because with iridology, we are literally face to face with our client. We are this close to their, their face. And that, of course, if you're maintaining social distancing is not, that's not social distancing. And so we need to then know how, if we don't, if we can't be face to face with our client, if we can't take photos of our client's eyes personally, how do we actually get photos from them in order to be able to do an iris assessment? So we're going to talk about a lot of different things in our time today. Let's, uh, we're going to start with what I've got officially prepared and then we are going to go from there. So, you know, when we, when we think about doing iridology, we need to really be aware that equipment is everything. Right. Equipment is everything. And when I say that, I mean, let's do a car analogy because I grew up, my dad was a car dealer. I grew up around cars. If I have a car that has a problem and I take it to the garage, to the mechanic for him to, to figure out what this funny clunky sound is, he's going to run a bunch of diagnostic tests on my car. If he comes back to me and says, I know what the problem is. I can't fix it. You have to take it to Joe down the street to fix it. I'm not impressed. And so we also, and, and if he doesn't have the right tools that maybe he can fix it. Uh, no, let me rephrase that. It's a new car and I've taken it in, but the mechanic I'm using is old and I have nothing against old people. I'm a senior citizen myself, but he hasn't kept up and he doesn't have the new computerized assessing things. He's got his wrenches and his, his bolt thingies and his whatevers that he would normally use to fix a car from 40 or 50 years ago. But now he looks at my car and he lifts up the hood and he goes, no, I can't help you. I don't have the right equipment, right? This is what happens when iridologists try to practice iridology with substandard equipment. Now, what you are looking at on the screen right now is actually my portable kit. I keep it in a pencil case, and this is absolutely, for a beginning iridologist, this is where you need to start. A good lighted, can you see the lights in there? I don't know, my light's pretty bright uh, on, that I've got shining on me. A lighted magnifying glass and a good pen light. And I like to, in here, I usually have a portable iridology mat, but I've taken that out for some reason. And so you need good handheld equipment. It's where we all start and it's where we all continue. It's not where we all end. There's other things that come in the middle here, but we really want to make sure that we've got our basic handheld equipment because you got to start somewhere. And I'm really in today's presentation, steering you away from the $99 or the $279 or even the $600 stop gap and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Actually, I'm going to go back that one slide. Um, go back one slide. I've got three computers in my face for this today and I'm finding myself getting tangled up in the tech. There we go. Okay. So, when we're looking at this equipment, we need a good medical grade pen light, right? One that has really white light. I don't think you can see it on my screen and I don't know that I've even got all of them out anymore. When you look at a flashlight, I don't know, can you see that that is a really yellow light? I've got another pen light, which I've since moved off my desk, but even my, my this flash, is very blue by comparison. And so the color of light you're shining on your client's eye changes how you see the color of their eyes. So you have to make sure that you've got 
a medical grade pen light that has the whitest light, not a yellow light, not a blue light, but the whitest light you can find. When we look at what we've got on your screen here, this is an old fashioned jeweler's loop. It was made by the Agfa company. I don't even know if Agfa is still in business. It's an eight power, which is an excellent power for a beginning iridologist. More is not better. You don't want a 10 or a 15 or a 20 because you get lost in the eye. And it, even an experienced iridologist doesn't need one that strong because they just totally get lost in the eye. This magnified light that I have here, or lighted magnifying glass, has three interchangeable lenses, a 2x, a 3.5, and, and a 10. And that's lovely as well, but you still need a separate light. You need a separate light because this gives you no control over where the light falls on the eye as compared to where your focal point is, where your best focus is. So there are times when you're gonna to want to use a pen light and the magnifier, but not the light on the magnifier. Got it? That gives you the ability to move your image around or to move your light around. And that gives you the ability to see a lot of detail that you would not see otherwise. So let's look at some eye photos now. I really want to stress here, really want to stress here that, um, that things are different in the world right now. In case you hadn't noticed, things are really different. And what that means is uh, the perfect world of iridology is not perfect anymore. All right. Used to be clients would come in, they would sit across from me. I would use, just let me grab it, my one of mine, I've got two, one of my absolutely gorgeous eye cameras to do their pictures up close and beautiful, right? At perfect focus, nice and big, macro, blah, 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 blah. But we live in a world of social distancing right now. And that means that your clients probably can't come in to see you. And you certainly would not want to be literally on the other side of this camera that close, right? Not if you want to really be respecting your client's desire to stay well. And so, and your own desire to stay well for that matter. So we need to be teaching our clients how to take their own photos with a smartphone. Now, this is not great. It's good, okay, but it's not great. So what do I mean by that? When we look at the amount of interruption in these photos, it's not great. We've got shadows being cast from the room. We've got shadows of the eyelashes even. We've got uneven lighting on this image that's on the right side of your screen. And so are these usable? Yeah, they're usable. I'm not saying they're not usable. If a client actually sent these to me to see um, if they were usable and if we could do an online assessment and yeah, they're usable. Are they great? No. Could I ever use them in the future to do any kind of comparison work for, has there been pigment accumulated? Has the lipemic diathesis developed? No, I can't because they are not close enough. They are not, uh, the resolution is not high enough and there's too much interaction and too much interference with lights and shadows that we aren't in control of. Okay, so those are some important things for us to remember and consider. But to do an assessment, can we do that here? Yeah, we can. We can get in here and we can do a good basic assessment here. We can do, put that assessment with the client's symptoms and concerns. And in a virtual a Zoom appointment or something like that, I like Zoom personally, I can show them their eyes. I can show them what we're talking about, point to it exactly, just like I do here on the webinar, you know, where I point to this and I point to this and I point to this and I point to this. And I can explain to them what I'm seeing and what it, and how we need to be working with their body to deal with the symptoms based on what their eyes are telling us. So, but we need to remember that your smartphone is not ideal. Right, because your smartphone has, even on the forward facing cam camera, a resolution of maybe 15. And, um, and the other part of that is it's gotta be so far away in order to keep the rounded eye surface in focus that you really get mostly face. 
Now I've created a video and it's on my YouTube page. You can search up Judith Cobb on YouTube. And what you'll find is I've created a little video there. It's back a couple of weeks ago of how to take decent photos with a smartphone. And I strongly suggest that if you are a practicing iridologist and you want your clients to send you photos, send them a link to that video because it gives them instructions on how they can get the best images to send to you. Okay, so that's really important. And they need to know that the images they are sending to you will not be ideal. They need to know there are various and some significant limitations with using that kind of a smartphone image but it's a good starting point for right now while we can't be necessarily face to face with our clients. So your smartphones are good. They're not great. If you're a professional iridologist and when we can get back to actually working with people face to face, don't use your smartphone, get a proper setup. Okay. Just saying, just saying. Alrighty. So that's your smartphone. And this is even when we've got it up closer and we've cropped it. When you do your, your smartphone images, and again, I'm going to just send you back to my YouTube page, Judith Cobb. Um, I don't even remember the whole thing, just Judith Cobb. And if it's all about iridology, it's mine. And so when we've got these smartphone images, then we have to blow them up, right? And as we do that, we're going to lose some of the definition. But we'll see the big markers. We'll see the things that are likely very important to doing those initial assessments. So quick rundown here, quick rundown. When, when you are teaching your clients how to do iPhotos with their smartphones, two people are needed really hard Two, preferably three. You need the person who's doing their, getting their pictures taken and they're going to sit with their chin in their hands and their elbows on the table. That's going to keep them really stable, really solid. Ideally, you would have another person there with your flashlight who's going to focus it exactly where you need it and will move it around to get additional images. And then we've got uh, the person who's taking the photos with the forward facing camera. They are also sitting with their elbows on the table and their and that's to help them be really steady. They're going to move in as close as they can and touch that photo button, you know, take the picture. And then we want to move the light, set up again, take another picture, move the light. So we want the light moving to different angles to help us see different shadows and different textures is probably the best way to put it, the contours of the eye. All right, so that's really important that we get many images. And you know what you're gonna find is that your clients are saying, I don't need to watch the video. I already know how to use the camera on my smartphone. And they do know how to use the camera on their smartphone to do a picture of someone standing by the, the national park sign or a picture of a pretty flower from a distance or you know something like that, a picture of the road sign, whatever but they don't know how to do the really up close images. So you need to be insistent that they need to be as close as they can. They need to get as much eye as they can and as little face as possible. And the person who's having their pictures done may need to anchor on one elbow and use the other hand to open their eye. So for those of you who are on Instagram, I'm just gonna demo that for you because you didn't see that. Sometimes your clients need help opening their eyes because they open wide and especially if they're really young or if they're older, open wide isn't as wide as it used to be or as, as wide as it could be. So you're going to have the person who's having their pictures taken, put their elbow on the table, their chin in their hand, and then have them do this. Okay, so that you're, they're opening as wide as they can and then move in really close and get that picture. All right, let's look at some more. Let's see where else we're going to go with this. Now, some of you are tempted to buy these iriscopes, and I know you are. And you know, some depending on where they're coming from and how well they're made, they range in price from like seventy-nine dollars US to three or four or five or six hundred or seven hundred dollars US. This, these are images done with an iriscope. An iriscope has fixed lighting in it which means you get, don't get to move it. You have no choice as to how many lights there are. You have no choice as to how they're positioned. You have no ability to turn any off. 
you're stuck with it. Now, here's the problem. These iroscopes typically have a resolution of between 2 and 12 megapixels. And in the research I've done, the most common is 5 megapixels. That is not high enough resolution. That's a low res image. And when you expand that, you're going to lose so much definition, it's going to make the image pretty much not useful at all. Another problem we have here is that because you have no control over how bright the lights are, how many lights there are, or really how the lights are hitting the eye, what it means is that you're getting completely frontal lighting. Frontal lighting fills in all of the contraction furrows. So this person, if they had side lighting, if we could turn off two of these lights and only have two of these lights on, we might actually see that it, that would allow the light to play across the eye in such a way that it would highlight contraction furrows, in such a way that it might show us the actual depth of a lacuna. And so we really want to avoid using these kinds of things that have the fixed lighting. Lighting is so important and the ability to manipulate your lighting is absolutely critical. I had an iridology student some years ago, lovely lady, who um, had been a practicing iridologist for some years but came to me because she wanted a top up, she wanted more. And I taught her about cameras and I do that in all my classes, in all of my courses rather, and taught her that if, if you have the option of both lights, one light or the other light, you need to be taking three images. You need to do one image with all of your lights, one with just the lights on the right, one with just the lights on the left, because of it enabling you to see the contour of the eye more effectively. She had never ever been taught that. No one, and she never experimented with it either. And so she, then after I taught her, she went and she started taking pictures with frontal lighting, side lighting, side lighting. And she sent me back an email that was giddy, like, like she just opened the most wonderful Christmas present. I can't believe how much I can see. And I can't believe how many contraction furrows I probably missed and all that kind of stuff. And so when you're looking at an iroscope that has that locked in lighting, it's not worth it to you. It's actually going to make you do a less than wonderful iris analysis. So please don't go there. Please don't go there. Okay. So I'm going to show you two cameras I like, and then I'm going to show you also a couple of things that may be helpful for you as you are working with this social distancing and you need to work with your clients to help them get better images for you. This is my John Miles illuminator. So um, this is a Canon Rebel T6i. My setup is now three years old. And this is actually my fourth, my fourth, what I'm on now is my one, two, third and fourth setups. I've got two setups that I run. Everything that I do fits on this camera body. So I only have one camera body. This is a 100 millimeter macro lens. This is one of, one of the John Miles Illuminators. He's got several. Why did I choose this one? I chose this one because it has a focus light that helps me to see where I am. Then it has a left, right, dual and switchable lighting. So I can have just the right light on, just the left light, or I can have both. Now what I'm doing rights and lefts, that's client right, client left as you're taking pictures, okay? So that's why it sounds like I'm backwards and I maybe don't know my rights for my lefts. So why do I love this camera? I love this camera because, um, and I would not have loved it as much 40 years ago. Now let me tell you why. 40 years ago when I started out, if, I, if this kind of equipment existed, I would not have chosen it as my first setup because back then, 40 years ago, my clientele was young. My clientele was pretty much all between 20 and mid 30s. At that age, they can do really well with just raising their eyebrows, open their eyes, and we get that full on iris, which is beautiful. This works really well if you've got a clientele that's younger than 12 and older than about 55 because that those are the ages where when you say open wide they go 
and their eyes don't open wide, but their mouth does, right? And so because their eyes don't open wide, they're cutting off parts of their iris and you need to have room to get in there to have them do this or something like that to hold their eye open, right? So for those of you on Instagram, when you've got younger and older clientele, you may need to coach them to be able to do this so that they can actually, you can see their whole iris for the image. This particular setup is not attached to my camera right now. Let me just grab it out here. But it, there's the lens and the light. And this sits about here when I'm working with a client. So that means that there's plenty of room for them to get their hands in there to open their eye and to, for me to get the pictures that I need, right? And so that is a huge comfort level for them. The, another beautiful thing is that the focus light here is adjustable for brightness, which means if I'm working with someone who's got very sensitive eyes, I don't have to be blinding them for this whole time that I'm doing their eye photos. So now that I am in my early 60s, I love this setup because so many of my clients have stayed with me and have aged with me. So they are now between you know, 50 and 70. And I try to do their eye photos annually to look for anything that is surfacing in their eyes. And this allows me to do it and get those really, really great photos um, without you know, having the eyelids half shut and having to reshoot, 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 reshoot because, oh, we got the top half, now let's get the bottom half kind of thing, right? So I love the John Miles setup for that now because my clientele is aging and I need something that, that they can, we can use to keep their eyes, uh, when, when we've got their eyes propped open. So this is what it looks like in practice. So you can see that there is a little distance between the front of the camera and my client's face. And that if she needed to prop her eye open, there's plenty of room there to do that. So John Miles is wonderful. Um, milesresearch.com is his website, I believe. And he says, buy your camera locally, watch for it on sale. Buy your 100 millimeter macro lens on sale locally and buy the illuminator, buy the add-on attachment, this thing that comes up here buy it from him. Okay, so a beautiful way to do this. Beautiful way to do this. This is the image we took with that last, last uh, on that last, in, that last uh, client of mine. And what you'll see is that she typically has very, very large pupils. She definitely is a sympathetic responder. And, um, the light on the John Miles camera is, is bright, but it's not so bright as to shrink the pupil down. So I would actually want to do images of her eyes with a much brighter light as well, probably, to see what happens to the fibers when that pupil is, is uh, constricted a little bit more. But how much clearer would it make the nutritive zone and so on and so forth. Then we have the IE4 from Iris Lab. Now, the IE4 is no longer being made. Matthew Dahmer, who makes the IE4, and that's this piece on the end here, has, has just released a new version called the IE5. And I don't know much about it yet, but what I do know is that if Matthew has created it, it's probably wonderful. I am so in love with my IE4. So it's that same Canon Rebel T6i, I think they're up to the T8i now and probably compatible, but check with these vendors. 60 millimeter macro lens, autofocus macro lens, and the IE4. So who do I love this for? I love this for those clients that are between the ages of about 12 and 55, where they can open their eyes really well and keep them open because this is gonna go right up against their face. We clean it with an alcohol swab before and after each use. It has, as you can see in the picture on your screen, two focus lights, and they are pretty dang bright. Um, there you go. You can see them in there. And we can control how bright they are by, and you might be able to see this pulsing up, or if it's at full pulsing down. Oh, there you go. You can see it getting brighter. Those of you on Instagram, I'll replay that for you. 
Uh, let's turn this around. So here we go. If I press on this side, see those two little lights inside there? See them getting dimmer? So we can control how bright these lights are. So we can, if we've got someone with sensitive eyes, we can be really aware of that and make them be more comfortable. So I love this setup also because it doesn't have any bits coming off it. So I feel like this is more portable. And, um, and that's lovely because sometimes I will put this in my specially designed backpack that I made and take it with me if I'm going to a conference or something and maybe I'm meeting someone there that I know I want to get their eye photos or I want to do mini consults at the conference, I can pack it up easily and take it with me. And this is what it looks like when it's being used. So it goes right up against your client's face. It blocks out all of the room lighting. It blocks out reflections from the room. You're not going to get any interference with this. And that is lovely. And that's why Matthew designed this to go right up against the client's face is to get rid of the light artifacts that come from being in a room. And so with that, um, we want to then look at what comes next. And again, this is IE4 as in the letter I, the letter E, and the number four, but again, he uh, now is the IE5. And his company is Iris Lab. Iris Labs. Mm, I don't remember if there's an S on the end of that or not. This, these are the images we took of the same subject. Remember when we looked at the images just a moment ago, the pupil was gargantuan because the light wasn't very bright. This light is significantly brighter. And so you would never use your iris photos to assess meiosis or midriasis or even anisocoria. You would only use your eye photos to assess the eye. For the pupil size, for your midriasis, meiosis, and um, anisocoria, you would use room lighting, right? And because that is my daughter and I sit across from her at the dinner table, I'm always looking at her pupils that are gargantuan and wondering how do we ease this girl and help her not be so, so reactive to the environment. All right, so I want to share some other screens with you because like we said, your smartphone is not the best option on the face of the planet. And what we want to do, what I want to do is show you some options of attachments that you can suggest to your clients that they could get to um, get better iris photos. So let me just pop in here and share some more screens with you to show you some other ideas that work well. Okay, that means I need to move it to where you can actually see it. Ta-da. Okay, so this is on Amazon.com. And um, no, is this Amazon.com or Amazon.ca? I do not remember right offhand. Let me just find out. This is .ca, so for those of you who are in Canada, this is a little lens setup. You don't need most of these, but it's only 25 bucks, right? And it has in it a macro lens. And the macro lens is the what you want. That macro lens clips onto your phone and it acts, well, it acts like a macro lens. It is designed for keeping objects in focus up close. Right, again, is this perfect? No, but most of your clients have smartphones. If they would spend, if they're in Canada, they would spend $25 Canadian to get this little ditty, this little thing to put on their camera, on their phone, they could get very usable iris photos to send to you so you could do the analysis, right? And I just Googled, as you can see on my screen, 4X smartphone lens, and this is what came up. So that was very cool. Very cool. Now, if you're in the US, um, this is what came up when I put in 4X smartphone lens on Amazon. Oh, I thought that was .com. I thought I had a .com one in here. Oh, darn. That is also .ca. Um, I know there's another one 
for uh, on Amazon.com. So for those of you in the US, that is just one simple macro lens that goes on, or it might again be another kit, but it um, again, it's got the macro in there. And that macro, when it gets clipped onto the phone, means that you can see all kinds of other detail that you wouldn't see with just the camera, uh, the camera lens, because the macro keeps it in focus up close. And that's what you need not ideal for the rounded surface. You're still, you're still going to have the, the room lighting, the ambient lighting issues, things like that, but you'll see the fiber. You'll see what you need to see to do a good base iridology reading. And again, it's inexpensive, which means if your clients are willing to purchase this kind of a doodad for their phone, they can at least do their own photos and send them to you. And then you can do the analysis. So in the final assessment, what it really comes down to is your equipment is super important and, and you want to make sure that you are using the best equipment possible for the job, right? We do have limitations and restrictions right now that are making it a little more challenging, but my, my new clients are happily following the instructions fairly well taking photos, sending them in, and we are able to move forward with, with doing their iris assessments and their wellness consultations online, which means my business hasn't ground to a halt. My clients are getting the service they need. I can arrange to set product out for them to pick up at their convenience, or I can have it sent to them from my suppliers. And so it's just a really great way to uh, keep your business going when your business is normally a face-to-face -face business. That gives you some information about cameras. Again, if you are a new iridology student, don't spend three or $4,000 on a camera just yet, but make sure you've got really good handheld equipment. And for the time being, teach your clients how to do photos using their smartphones. If you are an experienced iridologist, but you've never owned a camera, I've given you two examples of really solid uh, cameras that I've used personally that I can vouch for as being excellent quality and excellent customer service from the, the gentlemen who make them. And certainly if, if iridology is a part of your practice where you're doing it with every client, you need to have a good camera, right? So important. What not to buy? The low resolution iriscopes do not generate the greatest photos and you're just better off using your smartphone. All right. So with all of that, anyone have any questions? We covered a lot of stuff and things that we don't often cover. There will be another session of Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology starting in a couple of months. If you want to be in the loop to know when it is starting, and that is a, a course, a live online webinar-based course, that contains all of the curriculum to prepare you to certify with the International Iridology Practitioners Association, if you so choose, um, then you wanna hop on over to iridology.education. There's gonna be a little pop-up that asks if, I think the one that's up now is, do you want to download, uh, do you wanna get the free iris map? Just put your information in there, you'll get an email that'll follow up with you on that, and that will add you to the database so that I can let you know when the next course is happening. So that is it for today. I'm not seeing any questions come in, but that was a slice and it was some new information. Oops, wrong mouse. And some new information that we haven't generally presented in the past. So thank you so much for being with me. I'm just gonna double check Facebook to see if any comments have come in there. I don't see anything on Instagram. I don't see anything on the webinar itself. And if there's nothing come in on Facebook, then we will wrap that up for today. And you know what? Stay safe and stay healthy, Kay. I'd love to see you here again. And um, yeah, and so, yeah, just let's get in here and double check. And nothing new there. So great. So that's it for today. Again, if you want that iris map, hop on over to iridology.education and get opted in. And that will, again, keep you... Um, apprised of when the next course is happening. And until then, 
Uh, we'll see you Friday, 11 a.m. for another one of these on a different topic. Bye for now.